Hi, uh, welcome to a special edition of Courageous Doctors. Uh, because of the coronavirus, I'm doing this from my home on a radio show. So um, I hope that everybody is safe and and getting through this. This is a, a pretty terrible epidemic we're in. Uh, it's really unprecedented, and I really hope everyone's safe. And I'm going to start with a quick review and update on the coronavirus and then quickly get to some other news and we'll have a short uh, newscast and it's good to be with you all once again. Uh, just to review, uh, we've been with the coronavirus really since uh, probably February, but it was the middle of March where the uh, president put in the National Emergency Act, actually Friday the 13th, the middle of March. And just to review what happened at that time, um, we had recorded in New Jersey uh, just under a 1,000 cases and about less than 10 deaths. Um, at that time, we were testing very few, so I'm sure there was really a lot more because I know I was seeing some pretty bad stuff in my office ever since February, patients that had tested negative for the flu uh, but were very, very ill. And so I'm sure that uh, we had been seeing coronavirus. Basically, at that time, we were told that if the fever was high and you were short of breath, um, pain in your chest, really very sick, and, and these patients, um, many of them um, really were were so weak that it took them weeks to get better, and I remember treating patients that uh, didn't get better for almost a month. Uh, we were also told that there was a lot of asymmetric, a, a uh, symptomatic uh, people who had it, and at that time we thought that maybe there would be at least five to ten people that uh, would be contacted by the sick person that would start spreading fast. We also said at that time that it was respiratory droplets, so it wasn't like measles that stays in the air for hours. You really have to be within six feet. Therefore, the government came out with what we've all been doing this past month. We're now in the middle of April where we've been staying six feet away, wearing gloves and masks. We've been washing everything with alcohol and bleach, washing, our, uh, wiping off our mail, anything we buy from supermarkets. And um, it, it's been pretty bad. And, um, you know, if we were sick, we would stay uh, at home. And if we were in a home with other people, try to stay away from other people if we could. And... Uh, Let's see, some other parts of the history, just to catch you up. We had, um, at that time, mentioned that um, the Army Corps of Engineers was building hospitals and the Army was building quarantines so that the president had already shut off travel from China, from Hubei province where it started, and then gradually shut down the borders from Europe and, and elsewhere. But people coming back from these uh, areas that were Americans were put into quarantine for 14 days. People that were on ships, initially the ships couldn't get off, uh, couldn't come into port, but eventually they were put into Army quarantine places. And uh, the first one that came into Jersey was a cruise ship at Bayonne, if you remember that, and uh, they were self-quarantined. We were also told at that time Initially, the study's coming out of China, but now we know it, too, that even though you have up to two weeks to really come down with it, most people get sick after five days and are probably contagious by the third day, even before they show symptoms. And and it, about a week after you get sick, it is those that are going to really get sick that may or may not need the hospital with very high fever, shaking chills horrible weakness, shortness of breath, really scary stuff. This is a very powerful kind kind of flu, this coronavirus. And um, that, that would happen about a week later. And we know now in New Jersey, uh, in the peak, in the middle of April, we're in our peak. And although it's starting to go down and the rest of the country is beginning to open up a little, we'll probably be in this like New York till through most of May or at least the middle of May and that we have about 8,000 patients in the hospital with coronavirus in Jersey and about 16 to 1,700 or 2,000 on the respirator. So basically the numbers are that even though four out of five will have mild symptoms or not get sick at all, one out of five will get very ill. Most of them will stay home. 
but those that go in the hospital, about one fourth will end up on respirators and and there's a two or three percent death rate, so some will die, some will uh, uh the rest will make it, but they may have scarred lung lungs or problems. So this is a very really a very serious virus, a very bad flu, probably the worst we've seen in a hundred years. And just to put things in perspective before I go on to other news, um, remember that, you know, I, I've been doing flu for 35 years and it comes in waves and, and usually it's very busy in the office and nothing shut down. And now it's so quiet, everyone's scared to come out. And, and what's the reason why? Well, this is so, usually when people hear somebody's dying of the flu, they run in to see me, they want to get treatment. But this is so scary, nobody will even come in to see me. They're afraid to leave their house. Imagine if you hear a friend down the street or a neighbor, somebody close to you, was so ill they can't get out of bed, they're in the hospital, they're on a respirator. That terrifies people. And i got to tell you, for the past month, I've been doing a lot of patient care over the computer for those that didn't want to come in, and people are just terrified. So this is really unprecedented. Another name for coronavirus uh Besides COVID-19, coronavirus-19 is SARS-2. SARS means severe acute respiratory distress because the body mounts such a, a, a terrific inflammatory response that it actually attacks its own lungs and body organs, and that's how people die. So, uh, yeah, compared to the regular flu where, where even though we'll get millions and millions of people infected, and you may have a 0.3% death rate, which means 50,000 people will die. Here, even, even with a million people uh, infected, um, you know, which is where the country's going, Jersey, of course, a lot less, about 50,000, um, with a 2 to 3% death rate, you're, you're literally, um, you know, um, going to see you know, maybe the same 50,000 people in the country dying and, of course, less in Jersey. Uh, but uh, it's still, that's why it's so strong and so scary. Just a few other points. We do have some medicines that uh, I've actually prescribed a, a few. Um, the hydroxychloroquine, um, which will help prevent the virus getting into the cell. And, of course, you give medicine for pneumonia and prednisone and z and things like that. And, of course, they're working on rem remdesivir, which is similar to a Tamiflu, an anti-flu, to stop this. That hasn't been released yet. And we'll have the vaccine in about a year. But remember, just like with flu vaccines, that may or may not always be helpful. We expect this flu wave to return in waves, like probably in the fall. And hopefully we'll have the medicines. The last thing to say is about the testing. The testing has really been difficult. We've been waiting a week or so when we can get the test to get results back. Now the tests are supposed to be done faster. What we're hoping is we can get a test that you can do rapidly in the office where we can get uh, a better idea and then eventually have an antibody test where we can tell if you've actually had immunity, and that would be wonderful. So it's pretty scary, and, again, I hope everyone's safe. But uh, Let's have some fun with some other news because it's been a while since I spoke to you guys. So let's catch up um, with some Obamacare updates, government updates. Um, let's see. The New York Times says that the Congress, uh, this is a couple months ago, had banned the sale of e-cigarettes and tobacco products uh, to anyone under 21 because of all those vaping deaths that were, were from breathing this stuff in and they died and got lung damage. But the Fed said they would stop the sale of flavored e-cigarettes to everyone, but they would allow menthol and tobacco flavors. So that, that's still there. The problem is, uh, and the Associated Press points this out, that the teens are using uh, disposable vape cartridges that can be refilled at convenience stores and gas stations, so I guess they're still getting it. CNN reported that the Supreme Court had a close 5-4 to four decision. They upheld the public charge. Remember, that's where uh, President Trump can ask an immigrant on a visa or awaiting a green card to actually leave the country if they use our food stamps or Medicaid. Of course, there may be some holdup with the coronavirus on that, but that, that is the law now. New York Times says the feds are now offering Medicaid block grants uh, to states. Now, remember, before the feds would match anything we spent on Medicaid, so Fox Business uh, reminds us 
that by having block grants, which we used to do decades ago, whatever money is given to the states, if they use it up, then you don't have any more services. So Fox said this will cut benefits. Uh, Star Ledger reported that Governor Murphy had signed a law a month ago saying that uh, that uh, requiring health insurance in New Jersey to cover all of the Obamacare benefits, that's a good thing, and that New Jersey is going to be operating its own market rather than sending the money that was allotted to it back to Washington. And it also required insurance companies to report any expenditures that they made that were more than 15% of the premium dollar you paid to them uh, for their administrative cost. And plans have to limit the patient out-of-pocket spending, and of course, that's a good thing. Star Ledger said the governor also signed a law, and this I'm interested in, uh, on newborn screening. You know, all our newborns get that heel prick for diseases that can make them retarded or kill them or hurt them. One is called SMA, which is a very devastating uh, muscular disease. Uh, they, the babies are born paralyzed and weak with very bad muscles. And uh, there is a drug that can treat that now, so I'm glad that law passed. Uh, NPR said that 25% less Americans are now seeing their doctors for routine care and chronic illness because their out-of-pocket costs are not covered by insurance, and, of course, that's not good. The Star-Ledger said that New Jersey was expanding its family leave and disability. Now, of course, now we have the coronavirus money stimulus package coming, but uh, this is the law and will continue after coronavirus spending money stops, and I hope everyone was able to get their money. Uh, I think it's finally coming in after a month, uh, at least to some people. But the way this will work with the expansion for family leave and disability ongoing even after the coronavirus is that if you're working, money will be taken out of your paycheck to go for both disability and family leave insurance if you need it. And the way it works is if you're making $34,400, they will take $89 a year. If you're making $60,000, they'll take $156 a year. And if you're making over $135,000, they'll take $350 a year. That's disability. For family leave, if you're making $34,400, they will take $55 a year out of your paycheck. If you're making $60,000, they'll take out $96. And if you're making over $135,000, they'll take out $215. Uh, of course, uh, as, you, as we said before, the insurance now covers all coronavirus testing and cost of treatment, which is uh, something that at least right now temporarily is being paid for. Um, okay, let's move on to other health care news. Um, let's see. The CDC had reported that there were 2,900 flu deaths in the United States, and two of the children that had died were in New Jersey. That was mostly type B, and the vaccine was only 58% effective. Um, let's see. Uh, recalls, we always like to do recalls. Uh, salmonella food poisoning was found in Taylor cut produce, and we had mentioned that before. That was like the honeydew, cantaloupe, pineapple, sliced stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a lot of those was shipped to schools, hotels. This is from USA Today. Hotels, hospitals, nursing facilities. So, um, and let's see, Listeria. Food poisoning was found in all marked foods from Georgia in egg products. And this was like every, this was a lot. Uh, Kroger, Eglin's Best, Great Value, Kirkland, Fresh Time, Everyday Essential, Food Club, Giant Eco, Nelly, ShopRite, Wild Harvest, Great Pay, Walmart, Costco, and Trader Joe's. So just make sure that, you know, if you have any uh, cut fruit, fruit slices, like from Taylor Cut or any uh, egg products from Walmart Foods, just make sure that, that they were replaced with good ones. And Listeria was found in frozen burgers and cheeseburgers, so make sure those are good. Uh, there was recently a coronavirus uh, outbreak in a meatpacking factory, but the government assures us that that would not get into our food. 
Let's see, Star Ledger reported that uh, the inner cities are still having high rates of asthma deaths in children, and we know the schools, the old problem with uh, dust and mold, and of course, in the homes, smoking and and other things, and inner city pollution. Um, I I remember that when I used to be on the uh, New Jersey uh, Committee on the Asthma Coalition, Pediatric Asthma Coalition, part of the American Lung Association, and we had developed, worked so hard. This was a decade ago, and I know they're still doing good work. And you can look it up on the new, the American Lung Association New Jersey site um, or the Pediatric Asthma Coalition, uh, trying to get schools to have safe, safe, healthy breathing, like don't have your buses have exhaust waiting outside the door, you know, turn off your cars. Um, have no mold in the schools and things like that. And we had many things that we worked with school nurses. And actually, the asthma action sheet, it's now all over the country. We actually perfected out of our committee. We formed it and perfected it. That's where you go through a list of orders the doctor gives the school nurse. And that all came out of our committee. So you can go to that website. I'm sure they're still doing good stuff. Uh, let's see, the United States Pub, uh, Preventive, Preventive Service Task Force is now recommending that anybody over 18 get a hepatitis C screen, so we'll have to start doing that in our office, too. Hi, I'm Ingrid Burke. And I'm Gina Unger. Gina has known Dr. Barry in a professional and personal capacity for many years, and we are thrilled to be in his building. We are psychotherapists, and we offer mental health counseling for ages 12 and up. We do individual, couples, and family counseling. We're also excited to say that we have groups that we have for teenage boys and girls for social skills, anger management, and self-esteem building. If you need to reach us, check us out at lifeworksnj.com. Our phone numbers are also listed on that website if you'd like to contact us. Thank you. Thank you. Waxton is a full body unisex studio. We specialize in hard wax, which is gentler on the skin. We do all types of waxing from head to toe. You can come in with your friends, so you have the, the moral support. We have hors d'oeuvres. You do have to have a minimum of eight people for that party, and you would schedule that. Everybody is looking for a hand to hold and then someone to share the experience with, so you can look that up on our website. We have prenatal waxing. So we take a little bit more time with the new moms, and uh, a lot of people will schedule that once they hit their second trimester. We do have a waxing membership. It's set up just like a gym membership, and you come in just like you would go to the gym. It comes out automatically, and you just show up for your wax. We have several memberships for different services. We also have wax packages. The phone number is 973-542-8442. The website is www.thewaxden.com. We have 24-hour online booking. Come to the Wax Den. We wax it all. Uh, CNN um, said that Zantac and its generic form is still is still recalled so that's the antacid it has a cancer causing substance in it uh so please uh please don't uh use santac or its generic um cnn um has recalled its infant incliner sleep inclined sleepers uh the name is summer infant great go delta enterprises even flow and so uh, infant inclined sleepers, please look into that if you have a baby sleeper. Last year, remember, we had Fisher Price Rock and Play Sleeper that was recalled. Uh, Reuters, uh, reporting from the Journal of American Medical Association, the pediatric section, warned that pesticides in foods can decrease the growth of, fe of a fetus. And in their internal medicine section, uh, said that the food pesticides can lead to heart disease, and not only food pesticides, but sprays that we do for mosquitoes and our pets, or even shampoo for lice, uh, may increase heart disease. I didn't know that, so that's something I'll look into. And Reuters reminds us uh, from the same journal that sunscreens, uh, some of the chemical sunscreens are being absorbed into the blood, but the experts tell us they don't know how much 
harm that's doing as opposed to the barrier screens. You know, the thick, we're coming into the summer, so the thick suntan lotion that you put on or the barriers, uh, those are safe. But the clear ones that you can't see, uh, those are the chemicals, the benzones and oxybenzones that may get into the blood. Uh, just a little bit more, CNN said that we have a rise in scooter injuries, and here most of those were not wearing helmets. Uh, from China, there's a bubble tea with tapioca balls that actually obstructed the bowel, the gut. And uh, there are certain skin creams that have mercury in them. Be careful. That's from the Journal of the Amer American Medical Association. And the uh, mercury poisoning can present a slurred speech, blurry vision, and unsteady gait. And let's just end with a few uh, interesting things. We're all trying to stock up our foods that we've been doing for a month. And uh, Epicurious gave some good tips. They said, uh, here's some things to remember. Things like canned tomatoes, tomato sauce, paste, pumpkin squash puree, soups, coconut milk, meats like spam, mackerel, anchovies, and tuna. Those are all good things. Smoked fish and jerky, all good things to store up on. And things that can stay on the shelf like dry goods, crackers, nuts, berries, tahini, Dried fruit, cereal, protein bars, canola, silk in and fruit. And um, also um, olive, olive oil and vegetable oils, salt, pepper, and vinegar, and frozen spinach, things to freeze in the, in the freezer, spinach, kale, peas, corn, fava beans, okra, fruits, uh, berries, mango, and shrimp. Just a few more. Uh, pasta, dried beans, grains, nuts, hot cereal, coffee, tea. Don't forget your sports drinks and Pedialyte, especially for the kids. Uh, non-essentials, jarred, jarred salsa, chips, pickles, uh, preserved vegetables, bouillon and chocolate. And uh, don't forget if you're washing your fruits and vegetables, especially with the coronavirus, they recommend not using soap or detergent or bleach because you can end up eating it. Just put it under cold running water or place it in a bowl of water. Uh, thank you. It was very good being with you all again. I hope that we don't have a long time before the uh, next newscast, and I hope everyone stays safe. We're right in the middle of our New Jersey peak, but I'm hoping within a few weeks this will gradually die down and we can all get back to regular order. Thank you uh, once again, and it was good being with everybody again.